All right, well, you can't do all this work to an airboat and then come dragging it up to the landing on some ugly ass trailer. So we decided to paint the trailer and do a couple other things to it. An update or two. We're gonna put lights on the trailer. And in keeping with the, uh, well, I wouldn't say this is really overkill, but uh, we're gonna run all the wiring through some plastic conduit, spray paint it black and route it somewhere around there, but this will keep the wires from hanging down and eh, it'll look better and maybe it won't get ripped off on a twig somewhere on the road. Genius. This is what happens when you shoot video and do stuff at the same time or when you just don't think ahead. I should have gone ahead and cut this stuff to fit and all that before I painted it. Oh well, I guess I'll work on it tomorrow. 24 hours later. Well, I don't know if it was 24 hours or not, but you know, some drying time and all that. Maybe not 24 hours, maybe more, maybe less. Sprinkle on a little bit of instant hole and use a larger instant hole machine to uh, kind of chamfer the edges a bit. And we're going to need this held on extremely securely. Very important part. So a couple of tie wraps and good to go. Choose your rat wisely. You want a rat that runs fast. Not too fast. A well-trained rat will make short work of straight runs of conduit, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do the next runs that I have. We'll see. Go get him, Mickey. Well, ain't he the most famous rat? I mean, they say he's a mouse, but ain't no such thing as a mouse that big. Rats are meant to go through smooth conduit. I don't know if he's going to make these corners. Three, two, one. It didn't work. Maybe this rat will respond better to being sucked through the hose. So I ended up using a little tiny piece of string and a vacuum cleaner and the little tiny piece of string was drawn through there. And once I got it drawn through there, I can pull the big string through and then pull the wires through. Now the next fun part is gonna be when this wire has to make two 90 degree turns. It just made one of them. Uh-oh. That reaches there. And this is how much is left in the front right now. Which will work because most cars have a pigtail coming off of them. My truck has a plug that you have to plug it in here. So for most trailers that are like this, I have to use a tail light extension wire. I think it'll work. We have stashed a little bit of ground wire back up inside the tube. So if this ground wire ever does break off, we've got wire we can pull out of here. It's back to about here. Too many people just run this wire back here and put it under a screw and it takes all the stress and ends up breaking off. So I think that'll last virtually forever. This trailer light kit ended up being just long enough to do the job. So to make any fixes, roadside repairs, whatever you want to call them easier in the future, I'm going to steal some wire off the old wiring harness and put about two feet in there or so and then just stash it up underneath the trailer somewhere fold it over then if a wire ever gets broke off or anything you can just cut the tie wraps pull the extra wire out and you got something to work with instead of everything being super tight because uh, I'll bet I know the guy that's gonna end up working on this trailer at some point in the future well that takes care of the wiring for the most part I mean I still got to do the other side but it's pretty tidy, kind of neat, and uh, well, it's good enough for a boat trailer, I think. Okay, maybe it's good enough for a boat trailer, but for the last little detail, I gotta find a place to stash this excess wire. Hold up a minute, I don't think we're done yet. 
Look at those side bunks. Those beautiful 70s shag carpet side bunks. Perhaps they need a little bit of work. Next step, make the rub rails look a little bit better. Get rid of some of this rotten carpet. Just going to use some of this utility rug on it. I think it'll work just fine. Well, that was easy. Not. It's pretty bad when you got this much shop space and you have to move stuff around just to roll out a little piece of carpet. Whoops, almost forgot. I want the uh, beads and the carpet running lengthwise. Almost cut that the wrong way. My plan was to just follow the grain of the carpet, but uh, of course the factory didn't cut this edge straight with the grain, so. What I'm going to do is make it just a hair longer so I can start following the grain of the carpet exactly and use the lines on the carpet to help me line stuff up as I wrap it. I think it'll work. Beautiful. Well, it's time to do a little wrapping. A little Christmas present wrapping? No, not exactly. But anyway, see that right there? Well, this is the back side of this. This is the side the boat rubs against. I did that one backwards. I'm going to do this one the right way and have it wrapped around so that this curve is actually on the outside edge. I think that'll be all right because it's just a side bumper. It's not, you know, carrying the load of the boat sliding across it, so it should be fine. If it isn't, I'll have to redo it. All right, I own a pair of scissors. I was using it. Scissors, scissors, there you are. So I'm just trying to, you know, keep everything covered for the most part. This I will cut straight down to the corner, something like that, because I know from folding the other one that this is going to fold over the top of that. And this needs to be about this wide. That'll fold up like that. And we will make this about this wide and stop just short of the corner so that it kind of holds together and ends up with a you know, fold that covers everything up and not a hole through it. And we'll slap a staple in this to hold it in place. Ah, what the heck, two of them. Angle I cut on that. I will cut an angle back across this to match that somewhat and try to keep it tight together down in the bottom corner so that it comes out looking something like that. Now we do the same thing at the top, sort of. This is going to end up wrapping all the way over the top. So all we have to do is Trim that. This will lay back over the top to cover so that the corner looks good. We'll do that and then I'll trip over the camera. This, I have to get it cut so that it's straight in line pretty well with the edge of that. And you can always take more off, so let's uh, try not to get it too close. And once again, I'm going to stop a little short of the corner so that, eh, maybe a little too much short, so that it covers up 
the whole corner as it folds over itself. And snip. Yeah, a little wide, so trim it off right there. The beauty of the staples is Monel staples. They say not to use untreated wood because they'll corrode. Stainless steel staples say don't use them in a marine environment. So uh, take your choice. Monel stainless steel. I don't know which one would be better. And then we just fold this around and it comes along the edge of that. Nice, even. Looks pretty good. Looks almost like I intended it to look. And then I will tap a couple staples into here. Trim this little corner off a little bit, just look a little neater. That ain't too bad. And because I have trust issues with staples, I'm going to put a few stainless steel screws in the bottom of it. And that ought to hold it in place for sure. And it'll look something like that as a finished product. After much drilling and hammering, we have some bolts driven through a couple of pieces of 2x8. This is going to be the bow stop on the trailer once we get it all covered and bolted on. Throw away a pile of scraps. And put this on here. The right way over so that the same holes line up that I drilled and hopefully it'll go together with just mild beating. See what happens. You know what? I'm not doing that. I'm afraid I'm going to knock those bolts back out. I'm going to drill these out just a little bit. Drilling these out a little bit is not going to hurt anything. Wow. That cannot be at that much of an angle, can it? It's where it wanted to go, though. All right. Arrows, arrows, arrows. Do they line up? Yeah, they line up. Well, except for that one. What the? Did I use a bent bolt? Maybe. All right. And there's enough thread sticking through to bolt it on. Maybe I should have painted that board black. And that's what it looks like now. He's going to put new wheels on it white ones just like the spare is. This strap is. I would say it's probably about 14 inches too short. Uh, no, make that about four feet too short. Clickety, clickety, click. And Two become one. All right, it's 
almost ready to go back in and be put together. Yeah, right, sure it is. Well, I guess you could say part A and part B are ready, but part C still has a long ways to go. Can't wait to get the rigging done and get it bolted down in this thing and, well, get it out of my shop for one thing, but just see how it does out on the water. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and have a great day. Alright, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.